Make sure you guys go check out my new merchandise available in the link in the description below. Welcome back everyone to the Jack and Daxter HD PS4 collection. I'm Super Saiyan Paul and now we're here in the land of Spa. What the? These guys actually have 3D models looking like type things? Wow, I never actually paid attention to them. If you compare them to the Jack 2 ones and Jack 2, they were like cardboard cutouts. But these guys have something like 3D animation. Did you guys know that? What? This whole time I did not know that. Anyway, we just beat our fight in the arena, showing off our dark powers. And something that I really like about this game is that you can change in and out of the form, maximizing the usage of the dark ego, rather than in the second game where it's either you use it or you don't, and it's very scarce and far between. Here, it's like you have full control of whatever. Those were some sweet moves in the arena, boy. But a little more choke, and you would have popped, eh? You talking to me? Yeah! You talking to him? No. I'm conversing with me sweet departed mom. Of course you, you boarhead. You two are from the big smoke, eh? Huh? Who's asking? The guy who runs this place. That's who. Cleaver's the name. You blokes stick with me, and I'll take care of you. In fact, I've got a job for you right now. Ride me leaper lizard here and catch a few of those little buggers that have been raiding me storerooms. Snag me six of them puppies, and I'll let you drive one of me racing vehicles. That is, if Tamus ever lets you leave the city. I think we can handle that. No! I hate riding animals! They make me chafe. They make him chafe. Yeah, man. But like I was saying, the power of Dark Ego is strong in this one. Let me not we kill my lemur by accident. Ah, uh, young muddy rats! Did you see that? Okay, let's get these kangarats that look There's exactly like fun. Daxter and yeah, while well, he just rented that man's skirt. How dare you do that? We're gonna have to eat you. We are the law. But yeah, here everyone's armed to the teeth out here in the wasteland, and that's something that I really liked about it. I always wanted a place outside of the walls of Haven City, and they literally delivered on everything I wanted them to deliver on in Jack 2. Hero mode was what I pictured Light Jack to be, a new city out here beyond the the um the city walls and stuff like that. Because Korra in the second game, all he did was talk about was the metalheads in like the wasteland and stuff like that, and how they're massive creatures and how they're just a force to be reckoned with. Well, that's how I got hyped up for this, and now we got all these badass soldier people in this outside world, and we just jumped right into it. I still feel like, for me, this area, some people do love Jack 3 to death, like it's their number one. For me, I still felt more welcome joining the world of Jack 2 and then, whoa, holy shit, look at this rat, and Jack 1 more in like the very opening, for some reason. But... I, I think Jack 3 assumes that you played the first two, obviously. I know some people that got this game without playing the first two. A few of my cousins in real life as well. And it was just like... It, it doesn't make sense for them to do that, but... I feel as though this game, it, with, they came in with the mindset that, hey, you guys had to have played the other two games. And on, this is Jack. how it's going to start off. We're going to start this off very fast and jump right into it. Let's get this story going. And I think... They touched up on some really good points, and they finished off on some weird ones in some ways, which I'll bring on into the question later on. But let me make sure I don't grab any orbs by accident. And here we have another Lima. Lima fuel. Lima fuel. This much. Mm, that looks delicious to eat like that. Ho oh. ho. Okay, let's go around. Okay, we gotta go around this way. Hey, it's Mug Boy. There's the last one! Ah, you missed him! Oh, come on. There's like 50-something orbs that I just probably flew past. I remember that from the precursor orb guide. Which I'm not sure if I'm going to do because debug mode is the shit. Maybe me food stores will last a little longer now. If Tamos ever gives you a pass to leave the city, I'll let you take one of me rides for a spin. See you around, newbies. Goodbye, Kangarats. And now we have Monk Boy to deal with. Check out these funny dudes, huh? <laughs> nice threads. I didn't know Rubber was back in. What are you working on, Monk Boy? It is none of your concern, Animal. Look, coloring book. We've had a hard week. Don't push it. The arena shows all, Dark One. Hate consumes your eyes. Great. Thanks for the tip. It will destroy you, just as these precursors destroyed themselves. It doesn't look like any precursor crap we've seen. These artifacts are an abomination. 
One fell on the great volcano. We sent an expedition to the mountain, but my monks never returned. Ill tidings sing in the wind. I fear the remaking of the world is at hand. I think you've been out in the sun a little too long. Let's go, Jack. You must leave this place. Heroes think they can save the world when they themselves are lost. You could not possibly understand the dark forces at work here. Don't talk to me about dark powers. I want to know what this is. Stand back. And this mini game had stumped one of my cousins and he could not get past it for the life of him. If it wasn't for the Onan mini game, I don't think I would have known what to do either. I mean, like, as a kid, some of the stuff threw me off, but... Alright, let's just get 75. They really made this new friendly. However, later on in the game, when you have to do this for the precursor warp, from what I can remember years ago, that was hell. I don't think I've done that since 2012. I don't think I've done the Jack 3 Platinum Trophy since 2012. So it's gonna be interesting. Debug mode was only discovered like a few months ago, apparently, so... It's weird how people are finding out new things about the Jack and Dexter series this late in the cycle. I wonder who leaked that information, who data mined that. Do it once. Hypersensitive focus. Okay, 53, 54, 55. 60's almost here. Let's get this double. Yes, take your time. Okay, we only need 12 more. This is moving super slow. I don't know how we were having trouble with this as kids. Well, not really me. Most of my cousin. You cracked it, Jack! Don't touch it. Dark Eco. Yeah, you're impressed now, aren't you? Man, give this preps. Those are solid eco crystals. It has been passed down through time that they power the greatest of precursor technologies. Strange. He speaks an ancient dialect, the earliest precursor forms. Something about reclaiming this unfinished world. Those look like coordinates, like the ones from- It is picking up a very powerful signal. I don't think we're gonna like what this thing is yapping to! Even you cannot save us from this, hero. Hey, I'm the real hero here. You can call me... Orange Lightning. You may carry the color of our creator's animal, but we have plans to save ourselves. Stay out of our business. You and Orange Lightning are not welcome here. You know, I loved how Jack just basically gave him the middle finger and said, he was like, Stop, Dark Ego. And I was just like, hey, I'm Jack. I'm gonna take it. And I'm just gonna grab it and I'm gonna take it in front of your face. Literally as he says it. I love Jack. And Jack is a little bit more vocal, I would say. Like, he was still kind of quiet in Jack 2 somewhat. I mean, he could talk, but he's still kind of quiet. Here, you already see from the start, he's talking a lot more. Um, yeah, that was one thing that I really, really enjoyed about this. And something that's really interesting that I may bring up later on in the Let's Play is the whole line that he brought up there that you may color the... That you may carry the color of our creators and there's some really interesting things about that that kind of relate to real life that I've only recently learned where like there's theories that like one of my like my co-workers my boss always goes on about about like Shambhala and Shangri-La and like how there's people living inside the earth tell me if you guys have ever heard about that one it's a really really interesting theory and thought and it just brings a lot of conversation to the table so anyway gonna dismount the leap I keep saying lemur for some reason. Well, if it isn't the newbies. Keep yapping, Jelly Boy. We'll see who- Bite your bum, rat face, or I'll pound ya. Oh, great stink of the precursors. I got two words for you: Toothbrush. Nice rides. You like what you see? We use these babies to make runs into the deep desert to retrieve artifacts. Tough wheels for tough work. You said we could use one. I did, didn't I? But not one of those. Those are for the big boys. You can use that one. Ha! <laughs> what a runt! Seems to fit you. Get in, Dax. I'll drive. Can't wager a little something on a race, then. If you win, I'll let you keep that little vehicle for as long as you live. And if I win, I don't have anything. I'd say that yappy rodent of yours is a bit bony. But skinned and butted, he'd make a nice treat. 
my vehicle against him. Forget it, buddy. Jack would never do it. What? Don't worry. If there's one thing I can do, it's race. And that line alone just granted him the access to Jack X. Poopy diaper cleaver. You're out of here. Let's go, tough puppy. Tough puppy. I think the stupid antenna on this thing is what made it so Gerber baby ish. Don't you guys think? I feel like it would be a normal vehicle if it wasn't for this little thingy antenna. Okay, come on, man. We need to go to the, to the wasteland of spa. Oh my god, I'm fighting a stick in the mud. Stupid pole. Yo, we got a bunch of boxes. Shit. Yo, it's been a while since I've done this, so like, I forgot how the order of the tutorial goes. We're gonna skid. Yeah, Tokyo Drift Summer. And there's Spargus. I used to chill in these wastelands with all of my power and live out here. I don't know, I was a weird kid. I did weird things like that, don't judge me. God damn it. Yeah, these were my wastelands, hiding in the catacombs in the tunnels. Exploring the world, trying to find myself as Jack. You guys think I'm playing? Hey, Jack too, I did the same exact thing. Let's do this. Let's do this. You can see Cleaver in his vehicle. Here we go. And these guys have spiky things on their rims. Okay, let's see what those turbo. R2 for the turbo boosts. Try to kill one right off the start. Unfortunately, this does not work the same way it does in Haven City, where you guys can actually end up killing one another from the start, unless you push them into the water, which is very, very far-fetched. I pushed R1 instead of L1 for that jump, so that was bad. But I like the fact that in the beginning of the Jack 2 races, there's a chance you could blow up almost everybody. I think there was races where I've only had to, get, had to compete against two people at the same time. And with that being the case, it was just a lot less stress on my head. So we're going to go and head around here and then jump up. And then we can grab that and then we're going to dash through this water. Probably should have saved it. I used to use a shortcut, I believe. I think you can use a little bit of that off the map to get towards the end of the trail here. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to risk losing. I think you can jump off of this part right here, like where I'm going around. You can jump through that for a bit. It's nothing crazy, crazy hard, but, um... Oh. Yeah. Young Wayne and the tough puppy. Oh no, that came out so wrong. Uh. This is not my best event, I'll give you that. I platinum the game and everything, but this is not my best event. I don't know, this is why I still- Ah, oh, I pushed L2 this time. I'm used to the R1 button being jumping from the Jack 2 controls. I think this is still why I prefer Jack 2 over this game. Like, racing segments like this, I didn't like having wheeled up vehicles. I like the hover vehicles. I mean, having racing is a good thing. I like it. It's gameplay diversity. But having hover vehicles, then going back down to this, that felt like a downgrade. Because all of a sudden, we went from futuristic to old school. And now I'm facing the wrong way. They're gonna pass me. Okay, I'm clearly just chilling with Cleaver. What are these guys doing? I guess they're built to frolic around with me, I suppose. There's the sun. They're right on my ass. There's a little bit of a cheat. See how long it's taking me to go around the place? Like, it took me about a minute and 15 seconds to go around one lap. In Jack 2, the average timing for me was like a little over like for, especially for the precursor orbs, was like over 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds. While this one, it's a minute and 15, that's nearly like triple the time. Triple the time, triple the pacing, and it's like, uh... I missed my hover vehicles. It was fast paced. I like that pace. Tell me if you guys agree with that. Do you guys like the on-road vehicles here? And on top of that, they control a lot worse. Like. I never really realized this as a kid, but now that I'm looking at it, like, you can bounce into almost anything and this thing gets flung out of control. I'd rather explode than have my little square hitbox of this vehicle tapped and then spin out of control. I like that. The hover vehicle, you don't even need these turbos like that. It just works with hover stuff, so, you know. 
one hover vehicle should have been used in a cheat code for this like for the outside here this we could travel throughout the entire wasteland without having to worry about this type of formation in the road but we got what we got so there we go There's such a different tone to the game when you get nighttime driving, but Cleaver, right off the start, seeming like a kind of Spargus version of crew, just as annoying. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna end it off here. Smash that like button, subscribe for more. I'll be seeing you guys next time. Take care. Peace.